Dear David and Max, I'm sorry it's been so long since I've written. My life has been chaos of late. And I'm sorry that I haven't gotten to spend a lot of time with you recently. But as you're both growing up and getting older, I've realized there's something I'm long overdue in talking to you about. And that is playing for the long game. Real quick before we continue the letter, please welcome Jack McGee, doing guest art this episode. Thanks, Jack. You know how in games you often can do something flashy and immediately satisfying, but it takes away resources you might need later? That's kind of life. The goal is to look 20 turns ahead. Games taught me this lesson and always remind me of it. Not that you shouldn't be totally mindful of the present, because you should be. But games reinforce the idea that it's always a balance between your needs in the moment and what you want and hope for down the line. Now, I know you've been getting into Fortnite recently. So you know that moment when you run into another player and you can pop all of your consumables and probably decimate them? But if you do that, you're just not going to have any when you run into the next person. That's the lesson games will teach you again and again. But they don't teach it in that pablum greeting card way that they probably have told you over and over in school. I'm sure you've heard people say, prepare for the future, or save your money. And you've been like, of course, that's obvious, and brushed it off. Games, on the other hand, teach the full scope of this lesson, because there's another side to it. Sometimes saving for the future is hard. Sometimes you do need it right now. When you run into that player in Fortnite, maybe you need to fire off all your consumables to beat them. Maybe by trying to hoard them away, by not using them when the time is right, you'll get taken out right there with the unused items on you that could have been used to keep you alive and get you a shot at getting number one. Because the goal isn't simply to live for the future as so many simplified versions of this lesson seem to say. Instead, games teach us that the goal is always to hold the future in your mind to always be cognizant of it as you're making your decisions in the present. Without a plan, without a vision in your head of what you want the future to look like, you can't make the decisions right now that are most likely to get you there. In Magic, when you're drafting, you don't just pick the best cards each round. You have a strategy in mind, and with every pick, you ask yourself which card will help you achieve it. And games hammer home the future as a reality. In life, especially when you're young, Two, five, ten years down the line can seem unreal. You know it's going to happen, but it seems so far away that it doesn't have any weight. It doesn't seem like something tangible, something that your small decisions today can affect. It doesn't feel like it's something you can wrestle with and help create. And, heck, sometimes consequences that far down the line don't seem real either. If you do poorly on a test, I'm sure you're more worried about your dad being disappointed than lowering your chance of getting into whatever college you end up wanting to apply to in the future. But games compress time. They show us the path of our decisions, how some play early on changed the whole course of the game. Because you accidentally lost your starting warrior on turn 5 of Civ, on turn 35, you weren't ready for that barbarian invasion. Because you went and chased that player in Fortnite, Three minutes later, you found yourself outside the safe zone. Games show us the consequences of our choices and make the future feel real. Now, this isn't to say you should never blow off your homework or stay up late going to a concert the night before you have a test. There are times when you absolutely should. You should just do it consciously. Because if you lose that warrior on turn five, there are still things you can do to fend off that barbarian invasion 30 turns later. If you decide that this is one of those times where you really have to burn through all your grenades, all that means is you're going to have to spend some time scrounging to get more before the next fight. It's just about understanding the cost, so you can keep yourself from having to pay a bigger cost later, like showing up to the next fight out of ammo. But alright, by this point I've probably touched on that enough. There's just two more things I have to say about playing for the long game. First, it'll make your life better. It forces you to think about what you really want, and figuring that out is the first step to actually getting it. And it's easier than you know to just go through life without ever finding the time to stop and figure that out. And if you can see the long view, it helps you get through some of the worst times, when you've done something embarrassing, or something you feel is irreparably bad. Most of the time, if you can free yourself from the moment, 
if you can get yourself out of that headspace and look at the long game, there's a way back. Most times in the larger picture, it's not that bad. You learn from it, you correct for it, and you try to bring the path back to pointing towards what you want. Secondly, especially as you get to high school, there will be times when things can look pretty bleak, where it feels like your life isn't what you want and you'll never get there, that the world has given up on you. But remember all those times you were playing something and it looked like you were losing, but in the long run, things came together and you won? That's your life. Even if things seem incredibly rough, the world after high school is a chance to reinvent yourself, to choose again who you want to be, with a whole new set of people that you're starting off fresh with. So if it ever gets dark, play for the long game. If you can do that, you can always find a path that will still let you win.